Hello everyone, excuse the fact that I look like I've just, like, fought a bear or something like that, but serious bedhead. Today, on a lovely morning with some snow outside, feels like winter finally. But, um, welcome back to another tactic video. Today we'll be focusing on the Netherlands side, uh, PSV and their coach, Peter Bosch. Uh, it's an interesting one because this man is very flexible, very different in what he does and does a lot of different things, so it is tough to nail down one style that truly suits him. I have picked up one that I think is pretty good. He uses his formation more than others this season, so I've gone off that. We'll talk about some of the statistics behind that. Um, if I look at them here, he's used the um, 4-3-3 16 times this season, compared to the 11 for his 4 2 3, one. He's also used one or two others, but those are the main two that he does use throughout the season. So with that being said, I've designed a 4 Four two four three three, and it does ah looks like this <laughs> wrong thing um it looks like this the this is what it is it is our tactic for the uh for today um obviously you're gonna be like whoa that looks very interesting yeah it is it's a it's pretty neat one it gets a lot of goals it's really really aggressive and it's also quite good defensively surprisingly not something that you'd expect of PSV at the moment but it works very very well um. I'm really excited to get into it, though. I think it's going to be a fun one. We're going to talk a lot, show some cool clips again, get the Scout vids in, get the uh, clips from FM, chat through our tactics, and a slight little bit through how the team did and all those things like that. And we'll talk about all that fun stuff. So let's roll the intro, let's get into things, and let's talk tactics. Okay, everyone, so we are finally going to talk the tactics of Peter Bosch's side. So, you can see the 4 through 3 I have here, uh, and I've put out all the positions that are part of it, which you just recently saw. So, um, Bosch, one thing to know is he's really willing to adapt. He's happy to change his style to fit the team he goes to and get the best out of the players wherever he is. This is because he really emphasizes a few key principles that don't change per team, but he's willing to change his setup and formation and everything like that to suit his players, because he's he's keen on getting the best out of each player that he has, and he feels that changing systems and putting the players in the best positions they can be in to succeed is much more important than having an overall rigid system. So he's willing to adapt and change, even to the opponent, or because he has certain players available. So he's going to change even the personnel within his team for per game to game to better suit the opponent, because he feels these players will be better suited for this game. And you see this all the time. Um, it, it does occur, he even the formation changes as well to best two people, and there's a pretty famous example, which has happened recently, where he played Shouten, the six, at center back against Feyenoord in a pretty high profile game, made a lot of news, everyone's like, wait, what the hell, this guy's played a center mid at center back, and he was amazing, did so, so well, and it's because the other center back wasn't very good with under in possession, and it led to that. But it's just really neat to see, and that was a kind of a bigger example, because such a high profile game, PSV versus Feyenoord, and he's changed this to make his, his six be his center back. So it was pretty big news, pretty pretty crazy at the time. I mean, I, I was like, what? I was like, this font mob's got this wrong. There's no way Shouten's playing back there. But then he was in reality. And it's just kind of one of those things to to see and understand. It gets you an idea, mindset of what Bosch thinks about. It's those ideas and those understandings of stuff to get the best out of your players and give them the best opportunity to succeed that makes him such a good manager and also makes it difficult to kind of copy as a style. Because it's... It's very, very changeable, which makes things a little different, difficult to do. But some of the big things that he does like to look for are he looks to maximize possession. That's one big thing he loves to do. We got the tactic to get 62% of the ball for us this season, which is fantastic. The most in the Eredivisie with this test. Great to see. So obviously really, really high numbers there. You can't complain. Um, but one of the big things he also wants to do by this is is giving the players the freedom and expression to dribble and attempt risky passes. Because they have a lot of possession, and the team also, another big thing, is pressing, he lets the team do this because he's going, all right, you guys like to be you like to be expressive, you like to try interesting things, you're free to do that. I'm going to build the players around you and find the best system that lets you be expressive, but also supportive defensively and allows you to have these players making runs or doing these things to open up these opportunities for you as well. And that's a really big thing he does. 
And so it can be seen by also like the positional changes. He has a winger that likes to stay wide on the right and a center mid that attacks into that space underneath. The advanced playmaker sits kind of a little deeper and he'll get kind of players like this where these two are together being playmakers. This guy tucks inside and this guy goes around, goes up top. So now you have something like that happening. So it just, it, you have all these different shapes and different ways that things work that create different ideas. Or maybe you'll have these guys all together in the front three. They're pushed high, high and wide. Maybe you'll have the advanced playmaker sitting higher, the wing backs here with these guys. And he steps up here. So then you have a, a two, three, two, three, or maybe these two are interchanged and he's in the middle. He's a little deeper here. And you'll see this a lot with his tactic. People change where they are, interchanging positions to lots of rotations, uh, especially with players going forwards, because it allows them to make runs and do different things that create opportunities in different areas of the pitch. And you'll see some of the examples, especially the Gus Till goals that we show that I show. You'll really see what I mean by that. Where he pops up here to score a goal, here to score a goal, here, like he does all these different ways of popping up in different areas, and it's really, really cool to see. And I really like that about it. So one of the things it also does is because there's all these rotations, the system's super, super fluid. And because of that, it allows players to be more comfortable, I'd say, because they're not worried about, am I in this position at this point in this time of place? It allows a little more freedom to your ball players. And there's a lot of guys on this team that are really technical players that love to have the ball at their feet, and it suits them a lot more because of it. Now, um, because of the shape, uh, being very fluid, it obviously does mean formation changes, as I mentioned before. And so he uses the 4-3-3 and the 4-2-3-1 the most, with uh, 16 times to the 4-3-3, 11 times to the 4-2-3-1, respectively, this season. Um, the regardless of these shapes, the principles do stay the same. The pressing, the possession, all them are really, the expressiveness, all them stay the same. But one of the big things is, is that <clears throat> when the team builds out, there's two kind of different build out shapes that we usually do tend to see which are um usually this two three two three shape that looks like this so in this obviously you get lots and lots of triangles so you get these you get tons uh you get tons and tons of shapes that oh my god <laughs> as you guys can see it's just it's quite lovely the amount of triangles you can create with this system and this build out shape sorry as we draw all of them in but look at this look how nice that is look at all those triangles you get and also we've got to even draw on the goalkeeper because he's quite heavy in possession as well look at that look how nice that is all of these different angles different opportunities to pass into and get players into the and get the ball into the player so it works really really well for this and on top of this if they are getting pressed high, the goalkeeper will usually go wide to the right side, and this center back will go wide to the left side as well. And those are two big things they look to do on top of that too. If they are in trouble and they need to um and they need to move possession or get away, that's one big thing they'll do is target these wide areas here because these guys normally sit like this. They're very very wide and build up. They're right on the touch line, so they're not they're not tucked in where there's going to be a lot of people. So you're going to have to come out to them or you're going to have to step higher. So because of that, it really helps in terms of the build up shape. But that's one big thing you see from them, especially in buildup. The other one you'll see is you'll see it like this, where the goalkeeper will really become part of this. These guys will kind of shift wider into these areas. You'll see one of these two drop in. Usually it'll be kind of like this. And you'll see you'll see this shape here. This three. You'll see this three, four, one, three kind of shape as well. But they'll still look to go long of it, but they get more options in the middle and they pull more players onto them as well, meaning this long ball can be more effective on top of that too. So another thing they like to do in build-up. It's not as common, but usually you'll see them try to pass through the back. If they can't break the lines of pressure, the ball will go back to the goalkeeper or the left center back who will then ping it long to one of these wide players will then, then look to attack. The team itself usually looks to sustain moves in the final third, mostly by having the wide players get on the ball. Now, what I talked about was obviously having a lot of these wide, um, these really playing the ball wide and having a lot of attacks come through these wide channels, and they do. And there's a lot that comes from it. So you'll, a lot of times you'll see players like this drift over. You have a lot of guys drifting over into these areas. Like so. These guys will stay high and wide. He'll tuck over here as well, and he'll kind of hang out in the middle. And what you'll see is, is because of this, which will show you the example of the goal, 
these guys will all kind of tuck in over here and they'll all kind of like create like a bit of a weird wonky shape but they'll all just kind of be in this area here looking to aid looking to help in possession just kind of make passing angles and things like that and they have a little assistance here for the switch and things like that but this guy will be really really keen to get in to these areas here with runs he'll look to make a lot of these second a lot of these not second, these a lot of these runs into these areas and the ball will usually be kind of one of these guys here and they will look to play this pass oops it's getting white they'll look to play this pass into here for his run and then he'll score and this happens several times they'll look to do this play the ball wide move it into wide areas pull the defenders onto them and then have a guy make a run from open space or they'll have the winger drive down the line so we'll clear these out they'll, or you'll see what happens where you have a winger driving down the line with the ball and you'll have guys crashing the box like this oops you have guys crash the box like all these guys and then you'll have guys usually two pull up towards the edge here and crash, 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 whatever. And this ball gets played here instead of one of these guys. And then boom, they have a shot because they've now pulled everyone towards the goal. And now the guy on the edge of the box has a ton of freedom of movement and space to take his time, take a touch and finish into the corner. And you'll see that happen too. So those are some of the two, two of the bigger ways they look to attack, looking to build through the wide areas before doing that. They do attack a lot through counters, so they do score a lot of goals via counter-attacking, which is usually from quick combination play, leading to runs in behind by the strikers and the wingers getting onto things and looking to score goals that way. Well, that's another big thing they do. And finally, when it comes to pressing, the team has a five-second counter-pressing rule. If they lose the ball in any position, it is counter-pressed within five seconds immediately. They look to get the ball back. You have no time. It is just, boom, get the ball. But they will, which you'll see me talk about, they will occasionally, though, look when they do get the try to get the ball, is uh, if they don't win it instantly, they will hold off a little bit and find their opportunity and then, boom, go right after the team and press really, really aggressively, go right after them. And you can see that with one of the clips I'll show you guys against, um, who is it, against uh, Taventi, where the, the team really early on in the game lose possession from a bit of a risky pass, which they're encouraged to play, as I talked about. Then they press quickly, the winger presses quickly to try to counter press to win it. He doesn't. And then, after that, the team holds off, and then you see De Jong press the six, they press back, further, 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 further going back, get all the way to the goal, and goalkeeper kicks it long, concedes possession, boom, they have the ball back. And it's something that just happens a lot, so you can see it, and I'll show you obviously the examples of it, but it's a really, really interesting to see. But in the end, I mean, the team is fantastic when it comes to these, um, really, like, they're just really, really good at pressing they're really really good at quick combinations and they're really great at um just getting the ball forward super fast like they're really direct really quick they score a lot of goals get a lot of shots off but also maintain possession like they're not they don't they get it forward quickly but they're not they don't always concede like they're going to take it play it around in the back and then find the opportunity they're going to create the right opportunity to get forward boom play through your lines instantly and that's one of the things that's really interesting about this team is they have high possession but also bomb forwards you can't, you can't do anything. They just go flying forwards with such speed. They're almost impossible to stop. So that's kind of a bit of the tactics we've talked about. It's a bit of a tough one to do because he's not as, there's not as set structures. There's a lot of fluidity in his team. So it's hard to show you that without kind of doing some clips. So you'll see some clips. We'll talk about it a little bit and you'll see what I mean through those. Okay, everyone. So we're going to take the first look at uh, one of the clips here, which is going to be the distribution. So the building out of the back here. This is one of the things where we were talking about recently, just the 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three shape or the 3-4-1-2 shape. So we're going to see this here. I have it set to show you guys exactly. So Drummond rolls it out and then boom, right here we have it. The player's cut off, but you can see the shape here, exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the 2, the 3, the 2, and then the 3 again. It's the exact build-out shape. You have the right back and the left back, the two center backs, the DM here, the two central midfielders, and the three wingers. The three wingers usually hug these lines, the, the touch lines here. Same with these guys tend to be the wider ones, and these four guys tend to be this kind of middle area. So it, it's quite a nice shape. You get a lot of nice passing angles, lovely triangles here and here, 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 here. Like there's so many nice triangles that are created as well as a bit of a box midfield at times if these guys shift over. There's lots of really good shapes and lots of really good angles that are created by this, and it's really nice to see. 
You even see as it develops as well, you can see the shape change into the other one I mentioned. The goalkeeper is now used. Now you have that three shape, that three, four shape, that three, four, one, two, which I talked about as well. You can see the goalkeeper being a part of this back line. The midfielder drops in to help assist the DM and you have that line of four now, as well as the press is a little too much. So because of that, Drommel decides to go long. Thus, he goes out to the right wing where they try to win it. So that's a little bit of the distribution. Very, very much what I talked about. Pretty similar to all of that stuff. Here's an example of the team building out uh, in FM. So you can obviously see here we have the three, four, one, three shape here. In this one, you can see the build out. It's actually, let's build the pace up a little bit here for you guys. This is a little faster. But you can see here the ball gets played out. Dest. Back to ball scaggly. You can just see them playing through the lines. You see that two, three, two, three shape almost. He's pretty a little higher, but you can see that start to develop as well now. Now you can really see that two, three, the sorry, the the shape really start to develop as well. You can see the three, four, three now becoming something. But you see the movement, the playing between the lines, Dest, DeYoung, and wins a penalty. Oh, never mind. It's a free kick. But still, you can see the build up, the quick play forwards, just a lot of the stuff, the right shapes and everything like that. You can just see it all developing in that play there. And the, the combination down the wing as well. It's just, it's everything we've talked about really just showing you guys how they do it from back to front. It's a great example. So here's an example of the team pressing and a bit of their counter pressing shape. So they've lost the ball here. You now see the winger press heavily to win it back. He can't. So they hold off here. Pass inside. Oh, chance again to press, and they're going to keep pressing. Keep pressing. You see the more bodies coming forward. Man marking everyone, forcing the long ball, which PSV just nod backwards. I didn't include it, but nods backwards, maintain possession of the ball, and there you go. That's the example. Really, really aggressive on the press. The opportunity they were right back. Didn't win exactly then. Wait, see where there is. Press again. Okay, everyone. So this example here is an, uh, just a bit of an example of the quick counter-pressing mechanics that we see. So the team's possessing the ball around the box. They get Dest in. He tries a cross. It's cleared. Everyone's trying to win it. We try to win it there. We can't. Trying to win it again. Just constant pressure. Trying to win the ball. And Teze manages to win it back. Till can't. And the team is forced to clear it out. And they concede possession. You can see there just how quickly any loose ball, they're right to. They're getting into every loose ball, everything super, super quickly, which is that five-second rule. The second there's that loose ball opportunity, you have to press, you have to win it, and thus the counter-pressing, really heavy counter-pressing mechanics from Peter Bosch and his side. So here we're going to talk about um, one of the things in terms of goals from the midfield, as well as runners in the midfield. So they get the ball forwards, win the ball off the counter-press here, but this is the thing I want to talk about here, is mainly once these wide players get the ball, you will see the center mids make the run. So Gus Hill is the center mid on attack. He is going to be the one that makes this run forwards. And you can see here, Dest, Lang, they're playing around with it. Now there's the opportunity. They've Dest and Lang have pulled these two defenders over here. Till has drifted inside. Vermin has sat a little deeper. And look at this massive hole now that's been created. If we go back slightly here, we can see, right? So before... They're set up in this back four. Till's in a position here, almost making it a four across the front. But we see now as it plays, Dest drives forwards. This pulls a defender. Till backs off, meaning there's now two players here. These guys are right next to each other, so they're covering them. Veerman's there. Now Dest pulls wide again, and Lang, again, Veerman comes tighter in here, deeper in here. And look at the space that's created. Everyone has slight little movements, but these slight movements make a big difference. There's a massive gap for Till. He now plays the ball, boom, touch, finish, and it's a goal. And that's what we want to see. We're going to show an example of this, a little bit of a further pass from Dest, but it's the same exact mechanic of using the other players to create openings and create space for people to make these second and third man runs from the, mid, from the uh, midfield, or even just have the initial run be the one that's used as well. So it's just some of the things they do a lot, and it's really cool to see. There's also great cutback goals, low score as well. That's something that you'll get a lot from this tactic. Um... And you'll see it as well with them as you'll see with the stats later on in the midfielders score boat loads with this system. So here's an example of the goal that Serginho, Dest, and Gus Till combined for. You can see it right here. De Till makes the run into the space here. Dest sees the run. He attempts to play the ball over the top. Sees it. Till runs into that space. He gets it. Nice finish. And it's a goal. 
Now, the other thing I do want to talk about with this is you look at the positions of these players. Remember what I talked about before, where the positions of those other players are make this possible? It's again, you have the winger, you have the, sorry, not Dest, you have the winger here, you have the Van on Holt here, not Dest, sorry, Dest does it in the example, but this is, you have the winger here, you have the left back here, the two, no, yeah, yeah, you have the left, you have Dest as right back, you have the two center backs here, the left back, the right back, you have your striker, you have your center mid, and you have your, D, and you have your winger over here. So you have all these players in these areas pulling people out of position, pulling everyone over to this left side, meaning there is tons and tons of space for Gus Till to run into from behind. You also look, these guys are checking, but they're not looking for him. They're looking somewhere else. They don't notice it. Then someone points out late. He's like, oh, hey, no one notices. Till takes a touch and boom. He's in to score a goal. That's exactly what happens there. All these other players are shifted over. They bring the people in out of position. Thus, there's room in behind for Tilda score. So everyone, this is how our season worked for us. We finished in first place on 84 points uh, with Feyenoord behind us on 83. Went 26, 6, and 2. Very, very respectable. Scored 91 goals, conceded 28 goals. Luke Young, Joey Veerman were our two best uh, goal scorers. Joey Veerman, 7.58. 17 assists as well for Veerman who was the best player in the team by a country mile, picking up 37 goal contributions this season, which is actually mental, because if you look at his underlying numbers, they are absurd. This man had 13.79 XG and 13.49 XA, which is ludicrous in this system. It's just absurd. Now, um, he did play in both roles. Him and Till did play, um, I believe did play both, uh, center mid roles. We can look. No. A vast playmaker every single game. He played DM and scored two. This man, <laughs> this man just had the season of his, of his career. I mean, unreal this year. But Luke De Young still, though, tied for top goal scoring. Gus Till had 18 goals and 13 assists to bring him also into the 30s for goal contributions. Luke De Young had 26. Noah Lang had 20. Zano, who played on the right, had 16. As you can see, Tillman had a lot as well, same as Sabiri. But you can see the front line really, really bringing a lot of goals and assists, which is what you can see in real life. And Till has lots of goals. I think he's the second highest goal scorer on the team in real life as of right now. But lots and lots of stuff. I'm sure he's won by like Real Madrid. No, just only Manchester United. But there's lots and lots of stuff there with those guys that you can see that translates perfectly in that sense. And I'm unsurprised to see any of it. Now, competition-wise, they did finish first. They were knocked out of the group stage in last place. They lost in the quarterfinals to Feyenoord. And they lost on penalties to Feyenoord in the Cruyff Schall, which I think that's how you say that. But... Still, people played quite well in some of these competitions. It's just that I think we got overpowered by some better teams. In the Champions League, their group... Oops. Oh, Group A. Zero points against Newcastle, Napoli, and Porto, which is surprising to me. But, again, I don't, I don't know how to describe that one. That's an interesting one. I mean, their loss and draws came against... Oh, some better teams, some not. Go ahead, Eagles finished fourth, though, which is crazy to think. Um... But yeah, no, I mean, I'm really happy with it. The teams looked amazing. If we look at some of the stuff in terms of things like the passing networks, you can see lots and lots of combination play between the wide center back, the wide player, the center mid, and the winger, which is what we want to see. Tons and tons of it, with the DM being the link play for everything, which is really, really important to see and what we really want, because that's one of the big things that you see a lot from his system, especially in those the building shapes of the 3-2-3, or the 3-4-1-3 as well, which are really, really key. So you can see stuff like that. We go here, we go to the analytical data, we go to the teams. Oh, that's stuff I was looking at before. We'll clear that. Possession. No. Oops. Average positions. We can take a look at this. With the ball. You can see here. Um, oh. Right? Is this the whole pitch? Lozano. Chowton. Veerman. Where's our defenders? What? Um. There we go. That was weird. <laughs> that was very weird. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about in terms of the uh, the 
two, three, uh, two, three. So you can kind of get, you got your line of two, you got your line of three almost, and you got yours again. If we go just 45 minutes where there's not extra players on the pitch, you can really see it. Two, three, two, three here. Those are your lines. You're really going to see a lot of it, which is why I talked about being really heavily involved. And you can also, sometimes if they're their own, own half, you're going to see it with that. Uh, there, without the ball, it's a much more compact shape looking like a 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one which is what we really want to see as well, because that's how they're going to mainly defend. You will see them defend in a 4-4-2 at times, but it's a 4-1-4-1, which we've gone for to adjust here. But you can see both the attacking and the defensive shapes that I've talked about in terms of the 2-3, 2-3, as well as the 4-1-4-1 defensively showing strong in this system here. And it really nails down all of it. So, I mean, I couldn't be happier. It's worked out brilliantly in terms of what we've wanted, what we want to see with these guys. And it's, uh, it's just fantastic to have. So, with that being said, Time to talk the tactic now. So, 4-3-3, custom slate, as always. You guys know I always use custom slate. I like to make everything myself. No need to take from others, because why are we going to steal other content? It's just not right to do. So, your Superkeeper is on support with Take More Risks. Now, the reason he's on Take More Risks and not set to have a short a passing distance is because when we show the vid I showed you guys earlier in the video about Drommel going long to the wings, he will look to go long to the flanks if he's under pressure, and that's what we want to encourage him to do. We don't want him to dribble, we want him to go long to the flanks if need be, because that's where we want to have the support. On top of that, we have our fullback, which is where Teze will play 99.9% .9 of the time. He is going to cross from deep, sit narrower, close down more, ease off tackles, and mark tighter. Now, that's because we want him to close down more and try to win the ball back, but we also don't want him to get caught and out of position at times. Because if he's going to dive in, he's going to get caught, and there's not much cover on this right side. So we want him to make sure that he does ease off tackles, so he's only going to win the tackle when he knows he can. But he'll apply pressure, which will slow down the opposition, as well as be counter-pressing really, really heavily. And that's, <coughs> that's what we want to see. We also want him to sit narrower as well, just so defensively to aid, since we do have a winger here who's going to be staying wider. Because one of the big things we do talk about, we did talk about already, is that... With Bosch's system, he loves having players interchange in terms of where they are. The inside forward tucks in here. The inverted, the uh, wing back goes over there to bring those guys forward. The center mid attacks here. The winger attacks here. The, this guy's up here. So there's a lots of different positions that interchange and adjust throughout the pitch, which is a big thing that you see a lot from his tactics. So it's quite important to deal with that stuff. And also because we just want him to assist better in build up and come into kind of these spaces here when the team's looking to build up. Now, this right center back is a center defender on close down more, ease off tackles, and mark tighter. Again, the same thing. We want them to press really heavily, get quick to their man. The five second rule is really key. Press, get tight, but don't dive in because they're going to get, they do get beat. We're in a lot of trouble. So that's the other thing we want them to do. Defenders need to be a little more cautious in the way they do it. Same thing with the ball playing center back on defend on the left is stay wider, close down more, ease off tackles, mark tighter. Now, his job is stay wider. As a lot of times in build up, uh, when you do, you will see him drift wider here, and the the goalkeeper will come into that space, and you'll see them kind of form a back three in terms of the possession there as well. So that's not uncommon on top of itself to see that. So just something that I do have him do, as well as it helps cover this a little more on top of that. And with him saying sit narrower, you will see this kind of slide over a little more centrally, and you will get a much more kind of back three to deal with him moving forwards. Left back is a complete wing back on attack. This has dribble more, close down more, and tackle harder. It's the additional instructions. If you do watch highlights, you will see Dest uh, drive forward into these spaces here, driving into the middle, driving across like this, or even down the line, which is why we want to have him on a complete wing back, which has the roam from position category on it, since we know he does like to get forward and roam from those areas. Though the only issue is he does like to cross from these areas here, which is unfortunate because I can't do that. So it's one that kind of kills us where you can't exactly make the right playing role, but it's just one of those things that's not totally perfect, but we've done our best to get. So that's complete wing back on attack. Your DM, which is usually Shouten, is a DM on defensive fielder on support with close down more and tackle harder. He is our real aggressor, being super aggressive, pressing in all these areas, winning the ball back as best he can, playing it off to much more attacking players, which he has in front of him. And it's a perfect role for Shouten. He is just unreal in this role. He couldn't be better for it. And if you look, just some of the statistics, this is a perfect role for this man, and you get the best out of him. And that's the big thing, too. 
Each of these positions is designed to get the best out of the players on the pitch. If you look at this, Teze, how good is he? He is an excellent, excellent fullback on support. He's perfect for this role. The stamina, the passing, the all the work rates, everything. He's really, really good at this. You look at the complete wing back. Look at someone like Serginho Dest. It is his exact role. It's what he's the best at over here. You can see all these things that like he's great at this role. And that's the thing. It's all about getting the best out of the players in their in their roles that are there. And that's a big thing that Bosch does talk about. So, the next we have is the center man on attack, which is where Gus Till tends to play. Dribble more, move into channels, get uh, close down more, tackle harder, and get further forward. Now, the move in channels is key because he'll pop up in these channels here, these channels here. And you'll even saw for the goal, he popped up over here scoring the goal. Right? He was on this side. We overloaded the left side there. And that's the big thing that we want to see because this team is big on getting in those opportunities. The runners from midfield, the up, the just the players getting into the box. You'll see him as well scoring goals, running into these channels here as well, left by the winger. So it happens all the time. There's tons and tons of different examples to show, but it's a really important thing for him to have that get further forward and move into channels as well as dribble more where he'll carry it forwards and dribble with the ball as well. So it's just really important to have those things on because it makes a big difference in him getting forwards. Now, the left center mid is an advanced playmaker on support with just tackle harder. He is, the advanced playmaker is perfect for this role without needing to change anything. He's just fantastic. So just having him tackle harder just to be slightly more aggressive in the counter press. And same with uh, Till, obviously, why we've closed that more and tackle harder. We want hardworking guys in the middle, but this guy needs to be a little less so that he can get the ball when these other two win it if they're in compromised positions. Finally, on the right wing, we have a winger on support. Nothing extra besides close down more and tackle harder. You could have cut inside with ball, as I do feel Bakayoko does that a lot. But one issue I did run into when I had that is um, the center mid and the winger would be in the same spot a little too much, and they would just clog up the defense and not help them. So I left that off. I would encourage you to find a player that has the cuts inside from right wing trait, which I think will be probably better. I don't know if Bakayoko has that, actually. Sorry, Lozano, not Bakayoko, because Lozano was the one that played here heavily. Um, cuts inside from wing. So yes, he does have cuts inside from wing, and it worked much, much better. So, but Bakayoko plays in real life. Lozano is the one that plays now, so that's what in the game they chose him. But um, it worked much better this way. It was so much easier to deal with that. For some reason, the, the individual instruction screwed things up, but that's, again, how it worked. The inside forward on attack on the left wing has sit an hour, close down more, and tackle harder. Again, sit an hour just to encourage this guy to go wider, just so he can go around the outside. And then finally, pressing forward on attack with just dribble less, as we do want to be pressing. We want to press high up the pitch, be really aggressive, and it is a perfect role for Luke de Jong, who is an amazing pressing forward. So, you can't ask for anything better. I mean, like, this team works so perfectly with this tactic, it's insane. Now we have a positive mentality with a fairly wide attacking width. This is because the team likes to attack down the wings. They like to get a lot out of the wings, be a long balls out there, playing in possession out there. Tons and tons of play comes out of the come from the wings. On top of that, they look to play out of defense, usually looking to play out short passes, but are happy to go long if need be to either wing. Usually that comes from this player here driving the ball down the wing or the goalkeeper going down the right side. Those are the two things you'll see the most. Shorter passing directness as the team does look to play more combination passes, much shorter, but will play a longer one when needed. Much higher tempo as the team looks to get forward very quickly. It is not a like, hey, we're going to take our time. It's once they're in the final third, it's get the ball into the box, get a goal, get the attacking opportunity. Finally, work the ball into the box is the final one. You could have be more expressive on as well, as I do feel that does suit a Bosch style, but it doesn't really work for me in this. It didn't do the same thing so you could do it if you want but i wouldn't encourage it also play for set pieces as the team is quite good at set pieces so it's something you could encourage if need be maybe gets a tougher opponent where you want to grind out the result a little more finally we have roll it out i would say it's probably take short kicks but i find when i have take short kicks on he does go uh into these players here but i want him to always go to the center back um he does go out wide here but he does roll it out to the center backs usually and I do feel roll it out. You get more of the uh, the style that you want to see from him. Distribute quickly as well. The team plays at a high pace. Obviously, counter press and counter. That is just without goes without saying the way we've talked about this stuff. Then, much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution. 
get stuck in, step up more, higher defensive line, and a higher press line of engagement as it suits the very, very aggressive, high-pressing style of Peter Bosch. Now, this team, really fun to play with, really great to watch. They're definitely attacking. They do leave themselves open a little bit defensively, but it's a fun one. You will see boatloads of goals. Like, look here. I mean, they obviously can finish these, but like, the two goals, uh, there's two goals a game. This is one game, right? There's one game here. Two. Three. They played three competitive games all season where there was one goal or less. Is that not entertaining? <laughs> entertaining football at its best, guys. So, so many goals. I mean, look at the Champions League games. Lost three to two. Lost three to two. They have the lead, too. Lost 4-0. Lost 5-0. <laughs> Jeez. Lost 4-0. I mean, it's crazy. Just the, the amount of goals they score. Oh, another one here. Yeah, two back-to-back. -back. But, I mean, there's so many goals. So many goals. So it's just a fun, crazy attacking tactic to look at. It very much fits the Bosch style, and it's just a good one to enjoy. So, hope you guys did enjoy uh, this one. Um, I think it's a really great tactic. Really highly encourage you guys to use it. Again, links will be in the description below for both Mediafire and Steam. And it's time to roll the outro. Well, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy our latest tactic video on Peter Bosch and his PSV side that have been dominating the Netherlands this season. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get the most absurd results as he did. Um, it's unfortunate in that sense, but again, not everything always in FM translates perfectly from real life. And as well, the fact that Peter Bosch is a very pragmatic manager in his approach surely will help him in the times compared to us just testing a full simulation running one tactic without changing anything. So that, again, will affect things. But his pragmatism is what makes him such an interesting manager, and I think what makes him really interesting to talk about and analyze. Now, this obviously makes it difficult for me to design you a tactic, as I've really, I really only can make you one to two tactics, but they're going to have to be tested over a long period as it takes me way too long to play through a season, especially adjusting every single game, and it's hard to then show you guys that, because that would be like a five-hour long video. So, keeping it simple, keeping it basic, keeping the basic fundamentals and ideas of what he does, through the possession, through the counter-pressing, through the uh, movement from the midfield, the possession, build-out ideas, all these things like that, working to create somewhat of a basic system focused on the players as we know it suits the players the best thus we've made a tactic that suits the players pretty much the best to their abilities so that's what we've done we've designed it and i'm really happy with the results i think it's a great tactic i think it probably could use some tweaks in terms of some better players in certain positions but what are we going to do we're testing with this team that he's got and still hey we won the title as well which is always great to see so Thank you again for watching, everyone. Guys, I hope you did enjoy today's video. Remember to like and subscribe if you did, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on even more tactic videos, especially because we've got the Spanish Maestro. I actually don't even know what Chabi Alonso's nickname is, but the Spanish the Spanish wizard Chabi Alonso. I think that's another player's nickname. I, I don't know the Spanish, what nickname he gets, but Chabi Alonso is up next, and his Bayer Leverkusen side, after mass, mass requests, we will finally be doing that one. So that's up coming out on Tuesday. I hope you guys are ready for that one. I know I'm very excited for it. We've had a lot of success running the 3-4-2-1 and 3-4-1-2 already this year. So I don't see why it will be that much harder to design one that works for his system. So be sure to catch us next time on Tuesday where we talk tactics of the German Bayer Leverkusen side.